Hello and welcome to Ought and Math. In this edition of Ought and Math, we have some exciting concepts to learn about in inequalities in a triangle. Let's get started. All right, the first thing that we want to talk about is a postulate that says the sum of the measures of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the measure of a third side. All right, so let's consider this. Uh, our school is close to a 7-Eleven, and a lot of students live very close to a school. It's a public school. So sometimes some of the students may choose to stop by that 7-Eleven on the way home to get some type of food that might not be appropriate for them. Uh, I'm a big nutrition guy. So uh, monster drinks, Cokes, taquitos, all that stuff, uh, not very healthy, but some students make that choice to stop by 7-Eleven on the way home. So I say here is our high school, that's H, and here is the 7-Eleven, and here is the home. So if they choose to go home directly, we'll call that length Z, it's going to be a shorter distance than if they choose to go to 7-Eleven first. Um, and now there is some good food at 7-Eleven. They, they do have some bananas and some water and some other things. But if they go to 7-Eleven first and then home, it's going to take them longer. So if they take a direct path home, it's shorter than any two sides or two segments of a trip home. Now, we can think about uh, different sides that we can apply to a triangle. In this case, this is one set of sides that's not going to work. I have a side that's the length of five units, a side that's length of three, and a side that's length of nine. And it's not going to work because if we really draw this to scale, the five units would extend about here, and then the three units would extend about here, and the five and the three would never allow us to create any angles in the triangle. They'd basically collapse the triangle. So again, the sum of the measures of any two sides of a triangle always greater than the measure of the third side. Okay, so we can write an inequality uh, for the relationship. So we could say x plus y is going to be greater than z. We can say x plus z is going to be greater than y. And we can say y plus z is going to be greater than x. So those are the three inequalities we can get from this postulate. All right, theorem 30, the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So this is the exterior angle inequality theorem. So we recall from a prior lesson that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So that uh, particular theorem said x plus y is equal to 120 degrees. Now if x plus y is equal to 120 degrees, assuming that x and y cannot be zero, then this exterior angle must be greater than either x or y. So the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. Okay, moving on. Now when we talk about classifying triangles, we of course learned the Pythagorean theorem in another lesson. We said that if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. Now if a squared plus b squared is going to be greater than c squared, then it's acute. So let's think about what happens. If I keep a and b the same length, and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate, I'm going to rotate, keep a the same length, I'm going to rotate a in. Now in order for me to manage or uh, complete that triangle, I have to shrink the size of c. So now c relative to a squared and b squared becomes less than what it was. So a squared and b squared, uh, a squared plus b squared becomes greater than c squared. So as I move that a, uh, the segment a in, or rotate it in towards b, I am shrinking the size of c. So a squared plus b squared now becomes greater than c squared. And now you can see I have an acute triangle. Okay. So let's move all the pieces back. Now let's talk about what happens when I rotate A, the segment A, keeping the same distance again, out. Now I have to extend or lengthen C. So even though this, the length of A and B remain the same, C now becomes larger. So I've just created an obtuse triangle. So if A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, then the triangle is obtuse. So let's put everything back together as it was. All right, now the last theorem we're going to talk about <clears throat> is the relationship of sides and angles. So if I say two sides, actually I have two more. Uh, if two sides of a triangle, but they're both related, if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the angles opposite them are not congruent, and the larger uh, angles opposite the larger or longer side. 
So in this case, I'm going to say that uh, segment 2, or AC, is going to be greater than segment 1, or BC, which is going to be greater than segment 3, which is AB. And in that case, using this theorem, that tells me that angle B is going to be greater than A, which will be greater than C. So if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the angles opposite them are not congruent. And the larger angle is opposite the longer side. So side, longer side, larger angle. Smaller side, smallest angle. Okay, now we can take uh, this theorem and relate it now to angles instead of sides. So if I say two angles of a triangle are not congruent, and the sides opposite them are also not congruent, and the longer side is opposite the larger angle. So in this case, I'm going to say that angle A is greater than angle B is greater than angle C, which means that side 1, or BC, is going to be greater than in length side 2, or AC, which will be greater than AB. So the relative size of the angle determines the relative sides of the opposite sides of those angles in the respective order. So angle A is larger than angle B is larger than angle C. Opposite side 1 is longer than opposite side 2 is longer than opposite uh, side 3, opposite C. OK, so let's take a look at some quick practice problems. And then uh, we'll move on to a challenge problem, which I'll solve for you in the practice session of inequalities in a triangle. All right, so what are the restrictions on angle A? So I want you to think about it. You can pause the video and come back just a second, and we'll answer that question for you. All right, the restrictions on A, of course, A has to be greater than 0 degrees. In order, otherwise, it would not be an angle. So I have to have some measure to this angle. Now, it has to be less than 50 degrees, because remember, the sum of the remote interior angles is equal to its exterior angle of 50 degrees. So angle A has to be less than 50 degrees. Otherwise, um, this uh, triangle would not work out. So again, the, uh, and then angle B would be 0 degrees. And again, the triangle would collapse. So angle A has to be between 0 and 50 degrees. It's less than the exterior angle, but greater than 0 degrees. All right, next practice problem for you. List the sides from longest to shortest. Again, you can pause this for a moment and come back. I'll give you the answers. All right, so the segment AB opposite the larger side, greater than segment CB opposite the second larger angle, uh, which is greater than AC opposite the uh, smallest or shortest, smallest angle, which is 45 degrees. So AC is the shortest side. Again, AB is the longest side. Okay, one, uh, one more practice problem for you, then I'll give you the challenge problem, then uh, we'll call it a day. All right, so list the longest and the shortest sides. So again, you can pause this for a second, and we'll come back and solve it. Okay, what I've done is I've filled in the remaining angles of the missing, uh, or the missing angles for the triangle in each of the two triangles. So in this case, I have 59 uh, angle measures, 59 degrees, 60 degrees for ABC, and 61 degrees for BCA. 60 that's given for DAC, uh, ADC at 61, they filled in the remaining 59 degrees uh, for ACD, understanding that the sum of the measures of the angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. Now I can see that I have two similar triangles here. Uh, they all have, by AA uh, similarity, I have two angles that are congruent, so the third angles must be congruent. So I can say that uh, triangle ABC is similar to triangle CAD. And then when I talk about the relationships of the sides, I can see that the side opposite the 61 degrees here and ABC is going to be uh, AB. AB is going to be the largest side of this particular triangle, ABC. And then the largest side, in this case, is going to be AC. Well, that means that if angle or side 1 is greater than side 2, and side 2 and 4 are the same, then angle one, or side 1 has to also be greater than side 4. And uh, side 1 also has to be greater than 5 and 6. All right, so we know that 5 is going to be greater than side 6 because 5 is opposite 60 degree angle, uh, 6 is opposite a 59 degree angle. So the smaller angle, uh, relatively speaking, within a triangle corresponds to the smaller side. So 6 is going to be the smaller, or the smallest of uh, triangle CAD. So why can't I say that BC is the smallest side? Well, if we think about it, <clears throat> I know that uh, triangle ABC is greater than, or larger than, in terms of area and size, 
uh, triangle CAD because the side opposite 61 degrees AB is bigger than the side that's opposite the 61 degrees in the bottom left triangle AC. Right, so if that's the case, I know that this triangle, even though I have two similar triangles, this triangle is going to be larger, ABC is larger than CAD. And because it's larger than ABC, the smallest side um, of the two triangles will be AD because they have two similar triangles. BC will be larger than AD, even though they have a reference the same opposite angle at 59 degrees, because ABC is a larger triangle. Uh, BC will be greater than AD. So the longest, longest side is going to be AB, and the shortest side is going to be AD. All right, moving on to your challenge problem, uh, and we'll review this for you uh, in the next edition when we talk about practice problems. All right, so I have uh, seven different angles here in this triangle. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I want you to list the angles below in order of size from smallest to largest. Let's see if you can accomplish that feat. It's a challenge problem for you. I'm sure you can work it out if you spend some time, and I'll review it. If you come back and join us in the practice session of Inequalities in a Triangle in the next edition of Ott and Math.